Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad and in this video I'll show you how to download, install, set up and use the new Infinity software for Compo Pack 48. In the last video I showed you the quick and relatively easy way to get Compo Pack 48 on your machine and we looked at generating a world that used both vanilla and CP48 POIs. We hit Lucky with a nice big mega city, a Fabersville and even a little Asia town and you should know that there is no guarantee using Alpha 20's random world gen that we're going to get the POIs we want and also we could get some POIs we don't want. Infinity allows you to do something about the POIs you don't want by effectively removing them from the combo pack. It does not change anything to make it so that you will get the POIs that you do want. Ideally, you'll need map creation software for that other than the fun pimps built in random world gen. So let's look at installing Infinity. In the first video, I showed you the location of the Compo Pack 48 complete pack download on the Magolas Compo Pack Discord. And you'll find Infinity right next door to that in the download section under CP Infinity Download. If I click on that, we've just got one link at the moment, and you can see from this that we're up to version 1.3. So I'm going to click on that, it takes me to the download. And then you would just choose the download option here. So now we've downloaded the Infinity version of CP48. Before we get our hands dirty messing with it, there are some things you need to do, or at least things that you need to check. First of all, have you already downloaded the CP48 modlet or the CP48 complete pack? If you have, you need to get rid of it. There is no point in using Infinity if you already have all of the POIs installed in your 7 Days to Die. It completely defeats the object. So, go into your app data, find the mods folder, and empty it. If you're tired of going to the search bar and typing in percent app data, here's a quick thing you can do. I'm going to do it the first time. Percent app data, percent, hit enter, opens up the folder. Then I'm going to go into 7 Days to Die. And from here, I'm going to use this button here, which says paste shortcut. It drops a little shortcut in this folder, which I'm then just going to drag onto my desktop. And in the future, I can just, let me close that down. I can just double click on that to open that location up. It's much quicker. So while we're here, let's have a look in that mods folder. This should be empty and it's not because I've been playing with CP48. So if I click on that, I'm just gonna hit delete. If you want to, you can just drag it to your desktop out of the way. And for those of you that haven't been using AppData and have been using the mods folder, you need to do the same thing. Make your way into programs 86, uh, Steam, Steam apps, common, etc., and into seven days to die. Look for your mods folder and either remove it or drag it somewhere else. So ideally, we've got a fresh vanilla install of 7 Days to Die 20.4 at the time of recording. And what's next? Well, unfortunately, we can't just fire up the Infinity software. There are some settings we need to change. So where is my download? It's just in downloads. There it is right there. I'm going to open that up. And there is the new file that we've downloaded, which I can drag to the desktop and it'll take a minute. And again, as with CP48 complete, it's around about four gigabytes uncompressed. So it'll take a few moments to decompress it onto your desktop or wherever you decide it's going to live. So now that Infinity has been extracted to the desktop, we can see I'm on version 1.3. I'm just going to open that up and we'll have a look and see what we've got. At the very bottom there, you can see the readme first text file. If I just click on that, and it's just stressing that it's important that we make some changes to another text file that's in this folder. So I should point out that this is probably the most complicated part of using Infinity. So if you can get this bit done correctly, you should be okay. Without going into too much detail, what it's telling us to do is to replace two lines of text in this path settings text file. And I'll show you that now. If I open up path settings text, we need to replace this top line with the location of our seven days to die exe file. We're going to then replace the second line with our location of the app data seven days to die folder. So let's find those in file explorer on your, the root of your hard drive. 
we'll look for the program files 86 inside of there into steam inside of there steam apps common seven days to die and that's the folder that contains our seven days to die exe file so we need to copy this location a quick way to do that is just to go up to the address bar at the top here and do a right click and say copy address i can now go back to the path settings text file highlight that top line right click and paste and it'll replace it with the location of my exe file we'll do the same for the app data one let's use the new shortcut that we've created to find the app data seven days to die folder and then right click and say copy address back into path settings text file highlight stallions version right click and paste with your own then just make sure to save that and close it down so now all of that's done we can go back into our infinity folder and look for the program file itself it's an exe file so windows won't be happy about it you've got a couple of options here you can either double click on it and have windows complain go into more info and save run anyway or alternatively you can just right click on that file this is for windows 10 and you can just say properties and put a tick next to unblock apply that say okay and then now we should be able to start that up without any problems so every time you start up infinity it runs through all of the pois in the collection just to see what's there and build up the database that we're about to use as intimidating as this may look it's really not that bad you don't even need to think about what it's asking if you just want everything the same as cp48 complete so once it's finished the startup routine it then asks you a series of yes or no questions and you're just going to answer with y or n i'm going to start by pressing any key and first of all it's asking do we want an asia town if you want an asia town you would hit the y button then do we want fabersville now fabersville is a collection of 116 i think it says there POIs that are exclusive to combo pack and it will make one village which only contains these combo pack POIs if we want that we would just hit yes now it's asking if you want the tile set if you're interested in having a Fabersville town then it's worth installing the tiles as well if you just want the POIs to randomly appear in a vanilla town then you don't need the tile set I'm going to say yes so we have a chance of getting the Fabersville town it's also asking about medieval same as the other one I'm just going to say yes do we want the mega city well yes we do do we want the tile set which helps it group it all together yes we do next we've got old west i'm going to say yes again and do we want zombie land if we want zombie land we can hit yes here we've got the option of installing some additional decorations I, i'm just going to say yes now from here on it's going to get into the specifics of actual pois and these are the really large pois which are going to kill your frame rate if you haven't got a good system so if you're worried about performance then it might be worth saying no to these following ones so I'll press any key to continue i don't need to read out what each of these things are just know that they are huge and uh, they will slow down a slower machine So I've just answered yes to all of the questions there. So I have the chance of getting everything. So effectively at this point, I've still got the same thing as I would have if I had CP48 complete installed. So what are we looking at? On the left-hand side, you can see a list of Compo Pack POIs and I can scroll through them with the arrow on the side here. And the ones that we're looking at there are all categorized as commercial. If I click on Country Town, we get a fresh list and these are all POIs that have been tagged with country town and the same country residential downtown and so on on the right hand side of the window you can see details about any of the POIs that you have selected from the left so for example here this one toast by battle pappy you can see the dimensions the maximum amount of sleepers the minimum the difficulty tier and also the quests that are available so from here we can go into any of these and say whether we want to keep those in the compo pack or not when you find a poi that you don't want in your world you simply right click on it until it turns red 
but currently there isn't an option to search for one so you would need to go into each of these categories and search for it alphabetically by scrolling through so if there isn't a specific POI that you're wanting to get rid of and you just want to say for example not have any destroyed now bear in mind that this doesn't impact any POIs that are tagged as destroyed or remnants in the vanilla set this is only for combo pack I would click on that and it will highlight where the destroyed ones are and I can review which ones they are so I've highlighted all of the prefabs that are tagged as being destroyed if I now do a right click, it's deselected them for some reason. But if I right click again, they then come up in red. And that means that they won't be included in the version of the compo pack that I'm eventually going to export from here. Now, please note here, this is important that I've only removed the destroyed commercial buildings. If I go into country town, there may still be some destroyed buildings. There are. So in country town, I need to also right click on destroyed until it goes red on the left hand side there same with country residential right click and you can see how this is obviously something that needs changing and i'm sure it will be changed pretty soon if you're concerned about performance on your map then you might want to remove things like mega structures and extreme and there won't necessarily be a mega structure or an extreme building in each of these sections but for example, I know if I go into wilderness and go to megastructure, there are several of those in wilderness. So I might want to turn those off with the right mouse button. So now we've eliminated the POIs that we're not interested in having on our map. We can save this setting so we don't have to keep doing it each time. So I can go up to save preset and give it a name, uh, test CP48 and hit enter. And it's saying that it's successfully saved and press any key. And now we can reload these, this exact same setting next time we come back into the software without having to do it again each time. So the next stage, we're very happy with what we've got there and we want to put it into use. What we need to do now is just click on install files. There's a little warning on the screen there saying that all the selected files will be copied to and it gives the address of the folder. And if I'm happy with it to proceed, then I just need to press one. But if I'm not sure and I want to check anything, I can press any other key and I can go back. So let me press one and wait for it to do its job. And there we are. It says all selected files are successfully copied and press any key to go back to the tool. All right. So from this point, you can just go straight back into seven days to die and use the random world gen. And it will pick from these selections that you've used here. And it won't use any of the things that you highlighted in red. Again, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get everything. It doesn't even guarantee that you're going to get a mega city or a Fabersville or the zombie land. It just gives Alpha 20 Random World Gen the opportunity to select from these files. As with the first video, I've used the online map previewer, seven days to die map renderer by Kui, which is extremely useful. But I should point out that if you haven't run your map, then your processed splat4 file hasn't been made yet. So these, this water is actually wrong. This is showing water from the, I think from the sample world. So you can ignore the water. My generated world was called East Pofuba Valley. I've dropped that in there and it looks pretty busy. It's quite exciting. Let's have a quick check to see if we've got a mega city. M-E-G-A and look at that we have, and it's a monster. All right, let's see if we've got a Fabersville. Fab. There we go. Do we have an Asia town? No Asia town. That's fair enough. And what about the medieval? Medi. There we go. We've got a little medieval village as well. Then what about zombie land? Do we get a zombie land? No, nope, not this time, but maybe next time. You never know what you're going to get. Okay, let's hit escape and go into the teleporter and we'll have a look at the mega city first of all. There we go, the first tile in the mega city, and it is in the wasteland. Oh dear. <laughs> Scary stuff. Let's have a look for the medieval. And here we are at the medieval village, and I recognize those POIs by vitamin E. Fantastic work, absolutely love those. And there's our little medieval village, and very nice it is as well. And there we go. Now, before you disappear, keep an eye on my channel because very soon I'm going to have preview part two. Oh, there's a bird coming. Preview part two of Terragon. There is some progress and I'm going to be bringing you 
a demo of the software in use. Oh yes. I'm also hoping to do, where's he gone? There he is. Oh, there's two of them. I'm also hoping to do a video on installing a compo pack onto a server. Well, that may come sooner or later. There we go. Don't eat me. Thanks very much for watching. Please like if you found it useful or just enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel we, to find more. Thank you very much to my patrons as well. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all soon with some more videos. Bye bye.